Hey guys, it's none other than your girl, of course, Cooking with Tammy, and I am back with another recipe. Today we are going to be making a Southern classic. We are going to be making a delicious black eyed peas recipe. Anyway, when I tell you this recipe is going to be finger licking good, let's not waste any time and jump right in to getting this video started. First thing on our cutting board is our thick cut smoked bacon. We also have a sausage link. We have some celery, bay leaves, onions, bell peppers, both red and green. We also have some garlic cloves. And for our seasonings, we're gonna do chicken bouillon powder. However, you can feel free to substitute. And we also have some Cajun seasoning in the mix, as well as dried thyme, smoked paprika, ground black pepper, and of course, the star of the show. We wouldn't need all these ingredients if we didn't have our black eyed peas. So with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. We're gonna start by chopping our garlic. And when it comes to chopping the garlic, I like to place my knife just like that. Give it a good whack. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it flattens the garlic out, making it so much easier to chop it on the chopping board. Now, of course, if you don't have fresh garlic, you can always substitute with garlic powder. But I would suggest using fresh garlic. It amps up the flavors even more. Alrighty. We're gonna take our ramekin. We're gonna scoop our garlic up into the ramekin just like that. And we're gonna reserve it for later. Get out of here. <laughs> Next things up on the cutting board is our celery. And when it comes to the celery, we're gonna dice it in small pieces. Next up is our bell peppers. We're gonna dice our green as well as red bell peppers, and I'm gonna dice them fairly small. However, the preference is totally yours, whether or not if you wanna dice it a little larger, totally optional. Once we're done, we're gonna place it in the ramekin and set it aside. Now that we're done with our bell peppers, it's time to cry, yes, because our onions are up next, and trust me, onions bring flavor to every dish, but it's just something about the acidity in the onions that just makes us cry. It's just so crazy. But anyway, we're gonna dice our onions up. Once again, same thing applies. If you wanna cut it in slices, you wanna rough chop it, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna dice these onions up and set it aside. Now that we've dried our eyes, it's time for us to move on to the fun part. Yes, it's time for us to slice up our thick cut bacon, or should I say our thick cut smoked bacon. And this part is totally optional. If you don't wanna rock out with the smoked bacon, you can always use regular bacon, or you can substitute with ham hocks. If you're not a bacon fanatic, you can always use smoked turkey, whether it be turkey neck bones, smoked turkey legs, and another thing, you can even use, guess what, turkey ham. Genio actually makes turkey ham and it tastes really good. Not to mention substitute with some turkey bacon. Listen, I'm giving you options, all right? So there's no excuses. And I wanna also let you guys know as well, if you're dealing with a cut of bacon like this, be very careful when you're cutting it because you don't want, you know, due to the grease, you don't want your hand to slip and you don't wanna cut your finger. Moving right along to our sausage link, yes. Great substitution for the sausage. You can use andouille sausages or even kielbasa sausage, whether it be pork, beef, a combination, chicken sausages, your preference, your world. As you guys know, it was a thick cut of bacon. So yes, there's a lot of fat in this bacon. So we're not gonna add any oil to our pan, our Dutch oven, or our skillet. There's no need for any extra oil if you're using bacon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow this bacon to brown up just a bit, get all of those aromatics released. And once we're done, we're gonna add our sausages and we're gonna allow our sausages to work together with the bacon, come together perfectly, we're not really out to brown the sausages too much. You get what I'm saying? If they brown, they brown. The reason why I say that is because they're gonna be going through a long cooking process. It's been about 10 minutes and everything in this pot so far looks perfect. Yes, our sausages are slightly browned. We got all of those flavors from the bacon and we are good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our diced onions. Yes, it's finally time to add our reserved veggies. We're gonna add our minced garlic. All of those brown bits at the bottom of the pan, no worries because once we add the liquid, it's gonna deglaze the bottom of the pan. Our green bell peppers. 
add it in there as well as our red bell peppers and look at the color contrast what absolutely gorgeous and last but not least we're going to add our celery and we have our holy trinity going on in this pot yes we're going to combine everything mix it all up make sure we get those veggies well incorporated with our meats and allow the veggies to pick up the flavors from the meats and vice versa and i'm telling you this pot is gonna be everything not to mention the aromatics so far whoa absolutely mind-blowing in the meanwhile while our veggies and our meats are doing its thing we are gonna move on over to making our broth. Now, if you've been rocking out with your girl cooking with Tammy for a while, you already know what the deal is. We're not gonna really buy store-bought broth. Yes, we're not about that life right there. What we're gonna do is, however, we're gonna use our chicken bouillon or our better than bouillon paste. We're gonna add it to some water, about, let's see, about four cups, and we are gonna make our own chicken broth. Let me tell you, when you make your own chicken broth, absolutely flavorful and delicious we're gonna mix it up really good make sure everything is well combined we don't want our powder to be stuck at the bottom or our paste depending on which one you're using once we're done we're gonna add it to our pot also we're gonna go in there with some water I'm gonna add about three to four cups of water plain water why we don't need to add any more ingredients that contain sodium we don't need any salt and we don't need any more bullion give it a mix once again and we're gonna start by adding our spices. We're gonna add our bay leaves, as well as our ground black pepper. Add that ground black pepper, don't be scared, along with our smoked paprika. Our smoked paprika is gonna give it that nice smoky element. We're gonna add our Cajun seasoning as well. Our dried thyme, or if you got fresh thyme, feel free to add that as well. Give it another mix once again. Adding, of course, our star of the show, which is our black eyed peas. We're gonna add it to the mix. These peas were soaked for about six hours. Now, here's the thing. It cuts the cooking time in half when you soak the peas. You have to soak the peas. If you don't soak the peas, then hey, if you got extra time in your hand, then you're gonna have to cook your peas for about two and a half to three hours. So I would definitely suggest soaking it, at least for six hours. However, another tip, if you don't have sufficient time to soak your peas, no worries. Get some boiling water out of your old fashioned kettle. <laughs> How many of you guys remember the kettle? Yes, the one that whistled. Get the hot water, add the peas or the beans to the hot water and allow it to sit in there for about an hour and that would definitely help as well to speed up the cooking process. And once we're done, we are gonna cover it over. Yes, we are. Right now, I'm cooking on medium high heat. So far, it's been about 45 minutes, and this is what we have so far. Everything is boiling nicely, not to mention the aroma. I can't wait to taste these black eyed peas. I know it's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna check our peas for doneness. What we're gonna do is we're gonna taste one of the peas. If it still has a little firmness to it or a texture, what you need to do is add some more water. And I'm gonna add an additional two to three cups of water only because I want these peas to cook down some more and we are gonna cover it down. I'm gonna check on it in about 30 minutes and this is it right here. This looks absolutely amazing. Now, quick tip, when you're making your peas, all right, I'm gonna give you a couple instances. You know how I rock out. Let's say that you have uh, more water than peas, so to speak. You have a lot of liquid in a pot and you're not about that liquid life. What you need to do at this point is remove the cover, turn up the stove or turn up the flame and allow some of that water to evaporate and cook off, all right? Now let's say your peas are pretty much done, but it's not as thick, you know, to your liking. You want it to be a little bit more thicker on the stewy side. What you need to do is take your spatula, break some of those beans or peas down and it would definitely get thicker. Just mush it down, mush some of those peas up. Not all of them, of course, because you're not making mashed potatoes. But once you do that, it's gonna allow the sauce to become nice and thick and everything is gonna be nice and saucy, what? Yes, and that's just basically it, guys. As you can see, everything tied together perfectly. It looks absolutely beautiful, not to mention the flavors, the taste and everything. It tastes even better than it looks, trust me. So with all of that being said, now that we're done, we're gonna remove our bay leaves from the pot. And of course, we're gonna toss it. There's no need to keep it. We got all of the flavors out of it. So with that being said, get it out of here. And we're gonna take our ladle 
or you could keep it in a pot. But for me, presentation is everything, especially if you're serving. You're gonna take your ladle and you're gonna ladle it on over or spoon it on over into a nice pretty dish and hit it off with a little garnish. What do I mean when I say garnish? Let's see, we could do some chopped scallions or chopped green onions or what I like to do is I like to go in there with some fresh parsley, chop it up really finely and add it to the top. Mix, you know, take a little bit. You can mix it and incorporate it in there as well. But definitely hit the top off with that greenery. It's going to give it a great presentation. And with all of that being said, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with your girl cooking with Tammy. And I will catch you in another video. Enjoy.